Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Factorio. In the previous episode we have finished coming up with the concept for our liquids. I will be expanding and beaconing up everything necessary. The top portion here that deals with balancing the liquids is gonna be expandable slightly depending on what we need. The thing is we cannot be crafting anything that we are producing right here and the reason for that is every train that exits the stations is gonna come down here and if we build this next to it obviously there's not gonna be a direct route. So overall we always have to make sure that the things that are requiring the materials are not directly next to each other. Sometimes this is gonna be a struggle but most of the time not. For instance right now we're gonna start with copper cables, iron sticks, iron gear wheels and I don't think well let's just do everything you know I want everything in this space. So we're gonna deal with these four materials. Generally most people wouldn't advise to actually make the copper cables and ship them around with trains but it is something I would like to test out and I think with enough materials we can do it. If it doesn't work I can always change the designs. I'm guessing the design is gonna be something similar to this so first things first I'm gonna copy one of these stations over that have four train stops and we want to add that right there. Let's make our way over there. Um, actually I'm really nearby and there we go. My robot should be fairly quick about this. The stations of course for the copper cables they require some copper plates. And we want to bring copper plates if they are below 20,000. This is by the way the new number that I decided is better. Copy this over to the other stations. Let's check just what we need in order to get one entire belt of copper cables. With assembling machines and productivity modules. And of course a 12 beacon setup. Yeah this is great we can fill up an entire belt just with one machine. So if we split the belts like so get two lines for each station. We can cover everything with just four machines. We can have our station as close as this. This is gonna be load... What's that? Uh, load copper cables. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Thank you. And train limit is gonna be two. We want a loading station for this. Let's place this right there. We can then have our balancer more or less centered. Get this in here. This in there. This here. Nope. Come on, come on there. Wonderful. We get our beacon set up with a machine inside and we want to copy this over so the design is going to be something like this. Wait a second we actually have eight outputs. Yeah if I copy this over we're gonna require eight machines. Could I get away with something like this and then we double up or could we double up like so? We don't have the space for it except we put the station a little bit further up. I mean there's nothing that prevents us from doing so. Then we could have eight machines like so that makes more sense. And we can have the station right there for instance looking good. One line needs to ignore the machine and go over to the next. And then this guy will be going to this machine and then we just have to rinse and repeat. Hmm, wait a moment we probably need multiple stack inserters to deal with everything. If we do something like this we can have three stack inserters per machine which sounds fairly reasonable to me. This should also leave us enough space to power up everything and if we want we can even give this some proper lighting. Right after the station we want to make our way back and we basically want to end up right here with this track. We also want to make sure to put some signaling at least a couple of them so the trains don't have to wait for too long if there is no intersection. Okay time to set the recipe. We're gonna copy this over for everything. There's actually one last thing we need to take care of and that is bring out everything with stack inserters to fill up an entire belt. Two of them should be able to do it. Actually that's a problem because this belt is already gonna be full and I cannot combine it with the top portion. I guess one option we have is bring it out the sides instead. And then for symmetry's sake we're gonna do this with the top portion as well towards the other side. No wait this is even a bigger problem because we daisy chained them all. <laughs> okay you know what we're gonna do this differently. We're gonna stack them towards the top. The input belt is gonna come from the right side. And it's gonna go into the other direction. We can get rid of the rest. And then we want to extract the materials like so. Combine it on a belt and the belt goes outbound. And then that's the design we can actually stack up. So we need this eight times. Okay I guess we can get started here. It's gonna go up quite a bit. 
I would like the station to be approximately here, so a little bit further up. And then we actually need two of these guys. One is gonna go here in between the first two sets of chests and the other one at the bottom. And obviously we need to change some of that here. And this is gonna be distributed individually like so. Should be able to just copy this over. And then obviously we do the same thing with the belts here. This one is gonna come around and join that one. Actually, let's do it like so. I think that's gonna be better. You come around here and you come around there. Same thing with the top portion here. Gonna hook that up as well. We can have our rail here as close as this. Let's try to figure out where I actually had this. Uh, probably, I have no idea. Yeah, that actually looks about right. There we go. I believe we're done with this contraption. I'm gonna remove the beacons and all we have to do is hook up the inputs. Let's see, maybe we start here from the back. We need to know just how much space we need. So this can go up here, join the first input, you go there and so on and so forth. There we go. This is gonna look absolutely nifty and we can have two copper cable trains. Now, let me just get in my spider. There's another change that I want to tell you about. I'm not sure if I understood you correctly, but what I did now is just hook up a bunch of solar panels for my Spider-Tron so I can get more exoskeletons in the joint. And now we are pretty quick wherever I want to be. On the other side, I removed all my exoskeletons, I kept my personal RoboPorts and started to fill up everything with the personal laser defense with just the two portable fusion reactors. And let me tell you guys, this is absolutely great in order to take out a biter nest. We should actually go ahead and test this out. Yeah, let's just make our way over there quickly. The only problem with this setup is that if I keep on walking with the Spider-Tron, eventually the power is gonna run out, the solar panels cannot keep up. But you know, in slow bursts I can take out a bunch of camps and then come back. Whenever I do my usual stuff, it keeps on recharging. Anyways, let's freaking do this. We're just gonna get in here and let me tell you, this is absolutely amazing. I don't even need to use my rockets anymore at this point. And also I'm being repaired by my robots at the moment. Usually or sometimes I disable this, but yeah, this is just absolutely phenomenal. I love it. And if we check out the power where those lasers came from, we are still, what is this? Gosh, we are still at 100%. Maybe I can even do this with just one fusion reactor. But then again, the biggest problem with the fusion reactor is I need them for the RoboPorts. They do take a lot of power. But yeah, let's uh, do this one more time. This time I'm gonna shoot just a little bit to speed things up even more. But yeah, this is absolutely a great way to deal with the biters. Wonderful, everything has been built. I already installed two trains bringing the copper plates. Now, I realized it is the exact same thing for the iron sticks. We're gonna need one assembling machine, so we can just go with the same exact design. And we shall actually do that. I'm just gonna copy everything over here. Can we do that? Just ignore that I'm building over a oil deposit. We're gonna tap into much more precious deposits in the future. This one just had the bad luck to be in the way. But yeah, my point remains valid. All we have to do is change the recipes here. So once my robots decide to actually build those machines, we can change that to iron sticks. And of course, we also need to change the train stations to iron sticks. Oh, I don't know what it is about it, but it just never gets old building with the robots. I know I said it before. I'm just enjoying myself, guys. Obviously, we also need to change these stations. I think I already have an unload iron. So we want to make sure this is all nice and set for all of these stations. And then I guess we can already hook it up so the trains can get started. We should now see one of the iron trains moving. Uh, where do I have them? Um, hold the phone. I missed it. No, there it is. Moving. Let's follow this guy. This guy is going all the way over here. Yes, just what we expected. So basically it can already start filling up the stations while I'm gathering all the materials required for this. Let's also change the name of this station before I forget. This should now be Load Iron Sticks. Wonderful. And you know, I just like to produce one material at a time with these designs and I'm really hoping this is gonna pay off in the end if we have access to everything. Now I'm gonna make my way back to the base in order to gather some more materials. And in the meantime, I'm checking out my trains a little bit, see what is going on, how they behave. But yeah, so far it is looking pretty good. And then just imagine once we have the nuclear fuel, they're gonna shoot through the base like rockets. 
I don't really think the intersections are gonna be much of an issue because most traffic needs to go straight. And they usually seem to have priority because it always gets red as soon as they cross the intersection, as you can see. But yeah, it's not that bad. My inventory is full. Oh yeah, we have a slight wood problem. And just like that, I have another 500 belts. I just love this. Automation is just the best thing about this game. So I'm gonna make my way back here. I actually want to place a couple more solar panels. Looks like we can also gather up some of these miners. Yeah, check them out. And then we build the rest of the iron stick contraption. But first things first, we want to remove nature. Solar array. Let's plot this down. Yes, all of this needs to be solar array. Okay, robots, do me proud. Do me proud. Here we go. Place belts. Wonderful. Though I don't think we're gonna have quite enough yet. But we can see iron is already trickling in. Wonderful. We want to activate it together once everything is built. Very nice. That is another step out of the way. I gave this some thought and I decided not to go with the empty barrels. We're just gonna do the iron gears. I never really shipped liquids around with the empty barrels, even though that would probably be more efficient. So as for the iron gears, we're actually gonna need two input lines as well as two machines in order to fill up an entire belt. So I figured we can basically go with the same setup, maybe up to this point. Ah, I cannot actually copy everything over. I think I need another radar. There we go. Now I can actually see the entire thing. And what I would like to copy out is the four first machine and everything at the bottom. We're gonna have this installed right here. And then we need to fix something here at the top. Namely, we will be able to move the train station somewhat. Uh, let me also make sure nothing is incoming and take away the entrance rail. So what I would like to see is all of this gone so I can rearrange it. No, that's actually good. This is the train that can queue up and right here I would like to have my station. Now, it will probably look bad if we don't have it at the same spot. So let's just screw this and we want to go ahead set this up at the very same location we have the other station here. On the other side it's gonna vary a lot so I think I want to keep this as compact as possible, which means we want to bring the station all the way back here to the signal we have. This is also going to allow us to get out of the station already like so, which is earlier than with the other contraptions. I think instead I'm going to move this up a little bit so it is more in line with everything else. And we can then go ahead and bring this into the individual machines easily. Okay, now I'm just missing a whole bunch of belts and materials. Maybe we can already organize the materials at least. We also exclusively need iron for this, which is already set from the station we copied this over, which means I can hook this up. Though maybe we should make sure this intersection actually is completed. Okay, now we are just missing a whole bunch of belts. No problem, let's make our way back. Some more will have been crafted by now. As a matter of fact, our belt chest is going to be full. I can see no robots doing any work right now. We should not neglect the, the solar panels. I'm just gonna keep on crafting because as soon as we introduce the modules, we are gonna dramatically increase our power usage. Oh, looks like I forgot to change the station here. This obviously should not be iron sticks, but gears. Every now and then we should also start filling up our lakes. I should have more landfill here. Wonderful. Just do that every now and then, putting that stone to good use. I'm gonna speed this along by taking a few more belts than usual and let's make our way back. After that we can actually activate the machines. And here we are. Oh yes, build, build my robots. We can see some iron has already trickled in. Okay, now we just have to change one little thing. Obviously the eight lines are not gonna go to individual machines, but we need two per machine. So the second line should already go over there. We can move the light to the right side. This should not be iron sticks, but it should be set to gears. And you know, I wonder whether or not two stack inserters are actually going to be enough. I'm going to test that out. We need two more like so. And this here is going to be our new unit. So maybe let's remove everything. Yeah, and I'm going to replace it with the correct configuration. So give me a copy of that and we can just make sure everything is built the same way. And now all we have to do is fix the inputs. Just give me a brief moment. Wonderful. Everything fixed and ready to go. Let's maybe start with the other two contraptions. <laughs> There's another construction robot of mine. Let's maybe first get started with the copper cables and the iron sticks over here because we already have these stations full and I just wanted to activate it once we have that 
Now, the first thing we definitely need to speed up is the smelting process. This is going to be the most important part. We are able to provide as much ore as we want to the smelting stations, but they will not be able to smelt enough materials. Everything else I can have the patience with in order to beacon up, but that one is going to be rather important. So here we go. Obviously, with that crafting speed, we're not going to need many stack inserters. As a matter of fact, I want to try first to remove the center one and see if two stack inserters are enough to take care of everything. We're gonna do the same thing over here with the iron sticks, and all of this can now be nicely distributed. Ugh, I love it. This is gonna look absolutely amazing once we have it saturated. Same thing here, we're gonna try with only two stack inserters. Okay, nice. I'm actually going to activate the gears as well, even though this is not quite filled up yet, but at least it can already get started, and we are going to craft gears. Already fill up the first sets. Okay, what is the next thing on the list? Now, I need to focus a little bit. We need electronic circuits, advanced ones, and processing units. So we are at least going to need some sulfuric acid. We're also going to need plastic. For the sulfuric acid, we need sulfur too. My suggestion would be to make sulfur, then plastic, then sulfuric acid. So we don't have two ingredients next to each other that are dependent on each other. For the sulfur, I just need some water and petroleum, so we can potentially pump... I will have to calculate this, let's see. What do we need to get an entire blue belt of sulfur? Also, beacon dump, obviously, and with some productivity modules. We're gonna need three machines, maybe we're gonna change up the modules a little bit so the ratio is more perfect, but that means we're not gonna need that much input. If we check out items per second, yeah, look at that. We can easily pipe that. We don't even have to think about it. This means three machines to fill up an entire belt of sulfur, and we want four belts for this contraption. Let me see. Uh, we already have a station similar to this, this one here. We require two different types of liquids. This obviously means we can take this portion and copy it over. So that one would go right here. Let's see what's going on. As for the stations here, we can leave the water be. However, we want to change oil to petroleum. And we also want to change this logistic condition to petroleum. 70,000, that should be good. I'm gonna copy over the station to the other petroleum station. And then we have the two lines here. So that was actually fairly convenient to copy over, I have to say. I don't yet know where my main water collection is going to be. So for now, I'm just gonna do a little cheaty cheat here. Well, it's not really a cheat, it's just a mod. And let's be honest, getting water is just a nuisance. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a pump here and there. Eventually, as probably mentioned in a previous episode, I will bring in the water from a centralized storage area. But until then, this is the solution. Now we need two trains for the petroleum. We already have a station to pick up the petroleum, which is right here. So we have load petroleum and we have a train limit of three for this one. Interesting. That also means I would like to build three trains. And we just have enough materials to actually accomplish this, which is amazing. So let's uh, set this up here. I'm gonna do another train there. You guys want liquid cargo wagons. Let's actually already do the third one as well. And then we want to program this to load some petroleum. Where are you? There it is. We want to do that until full cargo inventory. And then we want to unload petroleum right there. And we want to do that until empty cargo. But we also want a timed past condition, which is 30 seconds. And that's just an additional security. Usually it shouldn't be a problem because we set the limit now to 70k instead of 100k. So if I bring a full load with 100k of petroleum, I'm still not going to reach the limit. But still, this is the programming I'm going to go with. Now I need, gosh, I need coal. I'm just going to pick some up from here. Thank you very much. We're going to give each train one stack. We want to copy over the schedule and paste them for each train and then... I guess we can just go for it, right? Let's see what it does. It goes over and picks up petroleum. Wonderful. So you should do the same thing and you should do the same thing. Um, yeah, there we go. Wonderful. We're finally doing it, getting in some stuff. I wanted to build, what? Uh, the sulfur, I believe. All we need now is a arrangement with a beacon and a chemical plant. Do I already have one? Yes, right here. And then we want to create sulfur. Petroleum input is going to be here, and we want to bring this in from the right side, water right there. This is going to be petroleum. Can I... I can't quite reach it. 
So I'm going to move these guys a little bit. And now that shouldn't be an issue either. We'll have a substation and maybe even a light. We want to bring out the sulfur towards the side. Put them on a belt. And that is probably everything I need. Uh, where are my trains? They should be filled up already. Ah, no path. Okay, let's figure out where the problem is. Uh, this should be good, should be good, should be good. Wait, ah! <laughs> there we go. Now there's a path. Yeah, of course. We should combine three together like so. So let me get rid of the inputs there. The inputs should be here on the outside. Yeah, that's gonna be much better. There we go. I think like that it is going to make much more sense. We're gonna have the substation on the other side here. And like that I would say we're gonna be golden. We're gonna overproduce slightly, but we can fix that by taking away some of the speed modules for instance. But that is gonna be an issue for another time. We now basically want to copy this over four times and then we arrange it slightly better, I would say. So this thing can move over. And yeah, all we have to do is remove the beacons again. Whoops, I actually forgot the underground belts, which are necessary, of course. Good, and now the last step is going to be to set up a train station as well as a balancer for these materials. And we are done with that as well. Okay, I went over the design a little bit, fixed a couple of things. I actually built a balancer that is a little bit distributed because this one didn't actually fit in here. So this contraption that you can see here is the exact same thing as this one here, just a little bit spread out. And I also made sure it fits in with the picture a little bit. So it's not quite as far at the bottom. The reason we cannot have less space than this is just because I want to have two trains per station and I want them to wait here. And therefore this is just the minimum amount of space we can give. But yeah, we now have a good portion out of the way that was a hurdle. The next thing we're gonna build are the plastic bars using some coal and petroleum. And then we're gonna do the sulfuric acid as well with the sulfur that we've just created. Immediately after that, I'm gonna go for all three types of circuits and it's gonna be absolutely amazing because we already have all the materials. All we have to do is come up with a proper design that actually fits in what we already have here. But yeah, I would say we are gonna take care of that in the next episode with that out of the way. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>